still in time until we're properly live. Hello, hello, hello. I've just got the thumbs up from our brand, and apparently we are live both on Facebook and on YouTube. Now, we're going to be taking you through Sizzix Chapter 2, some of our wonderful products. And, of course, I'm Pete, and this is Josh. Hello. So I'm just going to be here to answer all of your questions on YouTube and on Facebook. So just bear me, with me while I kind of flip from one to the other. Um, we'll try and answer everyone's questions, but of course we're going to be getting lots through. So it's it's uh, going to be quite difficult, but we'll 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 do our best. We will do our utmost. We will indeed. So any comments, any questions, anything you want to say, maybe you just want to say hi. Tell us what your favourite dies are, your favourite embossing folders. Tell them how. Tell us how you use it or how you intend to use these dies when you get your hands on them. Uh, now I'm going to be going through the chapter two. Then we shall look at our wonderful shaker panes followed by our muted collection and finally a little tease on mr tim holtz so we're going to be going through tim's collection not in a great deal of depth because tim is alive tomorrow so that's at nine o'clock uh pacific time or if you're in the uk that's 5 p.m and josh and i will be back on thursday at seven to go through tim's collection in a little more depth so without further ado, without any more preamble, let's get into our first set of dies, which are our lovely Finlands. So the first set is this wonderful, and it's called, it's called Pass the Bouquet. Uh, now, the great thing about this one, it's, it's so contemporary, it's so fresh, these lovely, lovely shapes, lots of detail in there. And you've got this wonderful hand coming in as well. Let me show you an embellished image of this in real life. I think just for the flowers themselves, there is so much going on here. There's so much variety, but it's that contemporary feel which you know and love from Sizzix that you're getting in this lovely, lovely bouquet. It's, I've got to admit, I've got to admit, it's one of my favorites. Now, if you love this set, by the way, I should say, and also a muted collection, Jess will be on Create and Craft on Monday. That's Monday the 4th at 7 a.m. for the early risers and later on at 11 a.m. So she will have this set on Create and Craft. Now, next up, let's take a look at this one. This comes from this is designed by Jenna, and it's called Patterned Butterflies. You're getting four butterflies in the set. You're getting that lovely, sumptuous detail. And again, you know, people say sometimes, how many more butterflies can you have? Sorry, I've got these the wrong way. I do apologize. I'm all upside down today. But here we are. This is it. This is our lovely uh, patterned butterflies. They come from the design by the wonderful designer, Jenna. And you can see the level of detail in them. Um, they're very, very contemporary, again. And they are designed to work with a lot of our florals, not just independently. I think this is going to be a super popular set. What you should, uh, what we should also point out, there is a big style which works alongside these as well, which we'll be getting on to a little later. Now, one thing that's proved very popular with all of you uh, are lace envelope liners. Um, we've done several envelope liner sets. Now, these guys, they work with different sizes of envelopes. They are sized to work with our standard size, of course. And this is the kind of thing now, it's not just about this detail. You get the envelope liner itself. You get the detail dies to cut into that. You could also take the detail dies separately, independently, and cut them directly into the envelope. And we have these wonderful little embellishments as well which go together it's a lovely lovely one. and of course when you're working with our cardstock whether it be our muted collection or our standard cardstock uh, it's really going to pay dividends gorgeous gorgeous colors there and that is the laced envelope liners from lisa jones now something which has had a resurgence in popularity over recent years uh is the lovely, gorgeous bumblebee. And this one is by Olivia Rose, and there are 11 dies in the set, and it's called Beehive. And you can see why. I don't think I need to say anything more about that, but there are three different sizes of bee. You're getting this lovely hexagonal background. And of course, the devil is in the detail with scissors. We do love to give you a few extras. So I've got these gorgeous florals to embellish there. 
very, very versatile for all your paper crafting needs, whether it be card making, journaling, scrapbooking, whatever it is, how you intend to use these. Um, we love it as designers because there's a lot of options, a lot of versatility in that set. Now the next set is called Summer Shapes. And this one is designed by Jen Ogborn. And this one reminds me of uh, summer holidays up in Anglesey on the beach, just the kind of thing that I would do. So when you're scrapbooking or you're making memories, maybe it's a holiday with the children, then this is absolutely perfect. But what I love about it as a designer, and let me bring in embellished image to show you the actual size of the dice. What I adore about this set is that it's a blank canvas for a designer. So if you want to bring in your inks, if you want to bring in some of your effects, some of your acrylics or anything like that, you can do that with this set because it's all there ready to go. Now, one that I think everybody around here loves. This one is Bohemian Bohemian Florals. And again, it's, it's very, very contemporary. The shapes, the sizes, the variety. This one comes from the pen of Jen Ogborn again. And I love the versatility of it. I love this contemporary palette. Now the colors come from our muted collection, which we will be talking about in a little while. Um, and it, it's just, it's absolutely super. I think this is one of those sets that we as designers gravitated towards almost immediately. Um, huge versatility in this and it works great with your opulence it works great with your car stock if you're inking backgrounds to die cut oh my goodness the the permutations are pretty much endless as they are with all florals now the next set i want to look at is called feel the cake and well i would say there, there are five dies. there are actually ten dies but there's so much detail you can see the dies themselves there you can see all this lovely, gorgeous detail. There's some lovely florals which go with it as well. And this is the embellished image to show you the size, the scale, and exactly what you're getting in the set. But it is called Build a Cake. So this cake can be 10 foot high, should you wish. You can build it kind of off kilter like that one as well. You know, you can add your floors, you can add your little sparkle there. There's the candles. There's so much going on, so much variety, so much choice. And of course, it's an evergreen set because it works all year round. We're talking about birthdays, anniversaries, christenings, pretty much anything you can think of. So let's build a cake. Now this one, I, I know what I keep saying the favorites, but I do love this chapter. But I particularly love this one. This is by, again, Jen Ogborn, and this is called Macrame Carfra. Macrame Macrame. Josh, which one do you call it? In America, I think they call it Macrame, macrame. and then okay. uh, over in the UK, we call it Macrame. I shall call this Macrame. Um, but if you're in the US, it's Macrame, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Macrame. Macrame. So there you go. Now, look at the detail in this. It is off the charts. But all of these separate elements allow you to build up this macrame, macrame background however you wish. And let's look at a couple of the possibilities here. We've even got this lovely hanging element. So maybe you just want to create this and pop it into a frame. Maybe you want to make it as a card background. Maybe you want to do it, uh, maybe something that you can incorporate into your scrapbooking, your journaling, whatever you wish to do. But two very different ways of looking at that by repeating this lovely pattern here. Really, really cool die set. Uh, and quite unique, I think. I've not seen anything quite like that. So now talking of interactive cards, as we were earlier, this is the summer spinner card. And you're getting your spinner card, of course, but you're also getting three different options because we've got a lovely B. We've got a dragonfly and finally a ladybug. And let me show you. Oh, I should have wound this up. I should have wound it up before we came on, actually. But what happens is when you do wind these little guys up and you open the envelope, take it down, this will actually spin around. What a lovely idea. What a lovely way to send a greeting, to bring a smile to somebody's face when they open up that envelope. And there are lots of options. As I said, we've got our dragonfly there we've got our ladybug as well on the spinner so different shapes for the backgrounds 
like the hexagon, the circle, and this lovely scallop circle as well. So there's lots going on there and lots of fun to be had. A great, great die set to engage with your children or grandchildren. They love this kind of thing. They love that interactivity. So that is Summer Spinner Card. Now, our Lisa, Lisa Jones, she's designed this gorgeous set. It's called Layered Summer Flowers. And this is part of a series. Uh, Lisa has brought out similar layered flowers, all in the same style, all of a similar kind of scale. So you can, if you want to collect these eyes, you can use them all together and they're all going to work seamlessly because of the stylistic similarity there. Here are the size of the dies. These are some of the options color-wise that you could use, but please do it however you want. You are the creators. We trust you implicitly. So that is layered flowers. Oh, sorry, layered summer flowers there. And of course, as I said, it does work in conjunction with all of our other layered flower sets. Now, this next one is called... Let me look at about 23 dies in this set. 23 dies. It's called teacups. But as you can see, we've got a mug, we've got some lovely cups, and we've also got the takeout. So it could be tea or coffee. And we're getting all this gorgeous detail. So the top of that actually works as the saucer for that. Isn't that great? Uh, we've got the florals. We've got these lovely wildflower stems as well. We've got some gorgeous hearts coming out of there. Now, they are much bigger than they first appear. So this is our embellished image with everything going on. And of course, we do encourage you to mix and match. Um, you know, there's lots of detail etched into some of the front of these dies as well. You've got that gorgeous little teacup tag as well. Oh, goodness me, that's a bank. I haven't seen this one before. That's, that's lovely. That's really, really cute. So there you go. Lots of versatility. Lots of options. Very contemporary again. Very modern. I'm, I'm seeing lots more of this kind of thing coming through. So if you just want to send a hug and a mug to a friend, then we'll look no further than this gorgeous set. Now this this is this next one. I'm so glad that we brought this back. It, it's called Jigsaw. And we've done similar things in the past. Um, what's so great about this? You can use the pieces independently. So if you want to put two together and have some sort of terrible dad joke or pun like you complete me. Then this is the set to go for. If you want to cut a photograph, a favorite photograph, and do it on the front of the card, maybe one of the pieces coming off to the side. You could even put the photograph, kind of, you know, just pop them in an envelope and let people make them at the other end. Let's take a look at the size. And we've got we've got a couple of colors as well. So that's the size that it's going to cut. Now, there you go. There's some more colors. Now, you can get a really very thin magnetic sheet which you can cut with this so when I paste the photograph onto that magnetic sheet die cut it and then hey presto you've got a fridge magnet so you could do it in the form of a postcard but you can do whatever you want um you know the possibilities are endless so we'll look beyond the artwork on the cover and think of exactly how much fun you're going to get out of that set now next up we've got one of our gorgeous boxes and bags and this is designed by the marvelous cat green um you've all the bits in it very very easy to put together and i'm gonna i'm gonna put that down for a second and i'm gonna bring in a couple of examples that have been made using this set so lovely little gift box there so you get you get 12 oh no you get eight of them you've got a complete circle so imagine this uh for some kind of summer party or a baby shower a christening you can put your candies in there little gifts whatever you want, whatever you design. But there are two different ways, well, there are lots of different ways of using them, but we've got the hundreds and thousands on the top, and we've also got this lovely little motif, which looks like some squirty cream. Very, very clever set. Well, well done, Kath. Nice one. So that is, ladies and gentlemen, that is box, comma, cake, slice. And there are 10 dies in that set. Now, Jamie Steele, very talented young man. Um, he's come up with this lovely transport set, and it is called Transport Collection. There are 13 dies in total. So not only do you get the plane, the helicopter, the car, and the truck, you also get your, your plows, you get your trees. So you could use these to build a scene. You could put maybe, maybe this little Christmas tree in the back of the truck or on the top of the car. It's about travel. It's about 
experience. Oh, there's bicycles. Well, there's a bicycle, of course. There is. Um, so this is something, again, for everyone. This is an evergreen set. This we can use all year round. It's something that should stay in your stash and be brought out as and when you need it, which I think you'll probably find is quite often. Now, they look quite small there. This is the size that they will appear when they come to you. Um, really nice, nice for your code making, great for journaling or scrapbooking, anything like that. So kudos to you, Jamie, lovely idea that one. One we as designers are very fond of. Now, next up, we're gonna be looking at, now it wouldn't be a chapter without an alphabet. And this one is by Olivia Rose. There are a total, it doesn't say how many dies we got on here. Oh, that's because it's one single die. I completely forgot about that. I love alphabets which are on one piece of steel like this because you're never certain, you can't lose your letter E. You know, and if you need to cut individual letters, simply place the card over the letters you need to cut so there's no waste. This is called marked alphabet. And you can see, I think you can see the lovely detail in these dies. And the detail is different on each one. So it's a really funky alphabet. The great thing about it is if you're laying it down, you don't have to get it perfectly on a baseline. You can put these kind of off kilter, you know, higgledy piggledy. It's entirely up to you. And this is the size that we have now. Don't think of alphabets as a standalone because really what, what, what you can do with these is because we think this out. And we think that this will work with the one that's come before it or the one that's coming after it. So, you know, having a few different alphabets in your stash, working in different styles, combining them, that's what our alphabets are all about. And that's why we call these chapters. This is chapter two, because this does not stand alone. It's part of a story, like a chapter in a book. So it's informed by everything that's gone before it and indeed everything that is coming after it. So there we are, that is Mark Alphabet. Now we've got a few more to get through um, and then we're gonna take a little break and, well, not a break, but we are gonna be looking at some of your questions. Uh, oh, this one, you love this one, Josh. Thank you, Josh. Josh. This is my absolute favorite. Absolute favorite. I, I love any kind of cute animal die set, but when they're on bikes, that is just one step further and you did create some rather stunning plans. i did you know what i didn't bring it down with me but i was oh, very proud of those ones. but it was easy with this dice set so look out for those on a live or on a facebook page at some point in the near future because uh, they, they really were magnificent kudos to you josh they're called they're called and i love the name they're called joy riders and they really are joyous they are so animated the way that they've been designed they're almost writing off the page or off the card or whatever it is you choose we've got we've got all the detail you'd expect our lovely florals our foliage we've got the cloud we've got the hearts they are staggering i love 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 this set and here is the size and scale of the creatures themselves so we've got the bear we've got the hedgehog we've got the fox uh gorgeous colors Really, really cute. I, I love them. I love them. And it's all the same bike, of course. It's all the same bike. You know what? You could cut that bike in half and create a tandem. That's not a bad idea. Is it? There you go. Mm. I can get them once in a while. Yeah. I'm once. nicking not, that idea. Not too often. Not too often. You can have that one, Josh. Thank there you. There you go. Free of charge. Now, next up. So that was Joy Riders. Uh, we've got, let's, oh, I love this one. Lisa Jones for the little monkey in your life. This is great for children's birthday cards. This is great for cake toppers. This is great for creating memories. This for journaling, for scrap. It's one of those, it is evergreen. It is something that is gonna go with you on your creative journey. It's a lovely set there, are 11 in total. And yeah, Jungle Fun. It's called Jungle Fun. And let's take a look again at the side. Do you know what? I would get this set just for that little chameleon there. I love that. Uh, Lisa is so good at those little details. She really does think it through. But we've got the lion, we've got the monkey, we've got the chameleon, we've got all that lovely jungle foliage as well. And crucially, your number set. So if anybody wants to do me a birthday card with it, simply use the five and the eight. I'll let you work out in which order for my next birthday. Um, but really, really cute. I love that. I adore it. Because uh, we, Josh and I, we do love illustrative cartoony motifs like that and i know that many of you do too as well because well they're very popular dance 
Now, let's put that to one side. We've got a lot to get through stuff. But I want to talk about stents and dyes. So these are framelits, fillets, and stents. And we've got two sets. I'm going to put these two out together. They are both designed by the wonderful Jen Long. Uh, as I said, they are the stamps and the dies. And this one, the one with the typewriter, is Hello Typewriter. And this one is Birthday Jar. So what we tend to do with these is stamp the image first then use the framelit die, which fits around the stamp to cut it through your machine. Now the jar, I should point out, I was rely I reliably informed, works with our jar shaker dome. So if you have that shaker dome, then there you go, you're ready to go. You can still stamp the detail on the inside. And I'm gonna show you, these are the die cut pieces. So not only are you getting the jar, not only are you getting the outline for your typewriter, you're getting this lovely sentiment, these gorgeous, gorgeous conical 3D flowers with the flower center, and these also these lovely 3D flowers and your butterflies. And let's take a look at how they come out together. So that is with the stem. These are those flowers. Now, you wouldn't think from looking at that that it would create that. It is absolutely glorious. And these flowers, of course, we're familiar with this kind of swirl shape. They will create your lovely roses, blossoms, whatever you want. I do particularly love the combination of something which is mechanical and something which is organic. I love that. That, that is lovely, Jen. Thank you so much for that. So I think we're going to come from our overhead camera. We're going to, we're going to take a break before I move into our embossing folders and we're going to talk about questions josh yeah we we don't have too many questions about the product yet it's okay. more just what i love to hear is just how much people are appreciating the dyes they love them and where people are from so i'm just going to read out a few of the facebook comments remember i am flitting between facebook and youtube so trying to keep track of all the comments here but i've just picked some of my favorites so far and some of them it's obvious why i've chosen them things like hi pete and josh from sunny old chester just up the road and that one's from facebook so, so that is alison lee uh and that's on I'll facebook just a second, Alison. we're going to the story house to watch Stuart. i'm very jealous, <laughs> He's jealous. so we've also got Birgit norton uh, those butterflies are gorgeous. Love the details. And that one is on Facebook. And I chose that. Uh, I, I like the comment, but also it's from Maine. And I know you really like... Uh, I love Maine. Yes. Yeah, you, you like Maine. So uh, I like that. this also, uh, Birgit. I like the size of the cups. The flowers are a sweet addition. And I was thinking the same thing with that die set. So those lovely little tea cups. I think yeah. sizing a die right and having a lovely element on the front... Yeah. Uh, it's great to have them where they're just that perfect size that fills up the right amount of space on yeah, a card. Lovely. Where, where, where about in Maine? Because I, um, I'll tell you why Josh knows I love Maine. I actually worked for three summers in on Long Lake, uh, a place called Naples, kind of 30 miles north east of Portland. You might know that part of the world. Gorgeous. Love it. Love it. I'd love yeah. it. I love hearing where everybody's from. Uh, it's just so great to kind of see how this crafting community is coming together from all around so keep those coming in uh so there was a question uh, from naomi frosdick which is is there a new craft box listed somewhere for april please oh i don't know we talked about the craft box we were talking about the craft box. there is one listed um can you tell us where it is listed abby no, uh, we can't say where it's listed at the minute, but we will find that out for you and I'll reply to you in the comments. Uh, so then we've got Hello Pete uh, from Ireland, and that's from the Little Craft Shop, and that is from Stephanie Francis. Oh. So um, I always I always feel uh, really happy when a whole you know craft shop wants to get in touch with watching us. Uh, and then we've got the YouTube comments. So we've got Denise uh, Ganowski. Good morning from South California. California, Southern California, USA, and that's on YouTube. Uh, Color Play, so looking forward to seeing the new collection. Uh, someone called Fifi Stamper on here on YouTube as well. Hi, from sunny, cold Scotland. And um, then we've got someone called Color Play. 
At least our Friday. Oh, sorry. It says at last our Friday fix. All the better with Pete and Josh. Oh. So that one was lovely as well. Uh, and that's what we've got so far. But I would okay. encourage you, if you have any questions about any of the die sets here, um, just write them in there. There's no stupid questions, and we will try to answer you. Uh, Indeed. And to the, the, the person from sunny, cold Scotland, it's also sunny and cold here in Wales. So, and I think Charles Dickens said that Mount Sunshine, it's like summer in the sunshine and winter in the shade. So, and how true that is. Yeah. So next, we are going to be looking at some of, well, all of the embossing folders from chapter two and also some rather lovely stamps. So I'm going to reach back here and bring those in. So we're going to switch to our top down camera. Now I'm going to be looking first at, uh, this one is called uh, Fan Charles. I appreciate you can't really pick it up from that. But let's have a look. And I'm gonna I'm gonna tilt this to try and get the light. Look at that. That that is good. And this is by Jane Osborne. It's a wonderful background. There's so much you can do this with with your luster waxes, with your inks, with acrylic dragging. Lots and lots of options, ways to use it. But it's kind of got a certain neutrality to it, which would make it sit perfectly with any background. Now that, that kind of fan, that shell shape. I'm thinking that this one would go really well with your buckets and spades, but it also has a kind of a, a classy vibe about it as well as a lovely, lovely, straightforward background. This next one is, oh, I'm reading it in a foreign language, it's ornamental pattern. Now, not the most interesting name, but it is the most interesting folder. Look at that. Uh, it's almost, it's, this one is a multi-level. So it's 3D, but it's multi-level as well. So what it, it, it's almost organic, but it's, it's kind of geometric as well. Really, really interesting pattern and something, I think, as a pattern, if we remember our lovely florals at the beginning, I think this would look stunning in the background. This really would. But the great thing about 3D as well, it, you, can, you can wrap this, so you can do candle wraps, you can, you can wrap it. This could be a journal. Cover. You know, you, you could wrap it around like that. It's absolutely gorgeous. Loving that one. Um, next one, this is a particular favorite of mine by Jen Ogborn, and it's called Flower Power. And again, let me bring in, let's take these out just for a second, because I want to bring this in, because I want you to see the, the, the depth of the emboss in there. It is gorgeous. Again, it is organic, it's floral, but it's kind of, it's almost, it's almost kind of art deco in the way it's put together. It's really, really nice. And again, it's got, it's, it's what we want to give you with these 3D embossing folders, we want to give you classics, which you're going to be able to use with any style of crafting, with any of the styles, whether it's the contemporary dyes or whether it's vintage style dyes, whatever. And that's what we've got here. But I mean, gorgeous in the card stock but equally gorgeous if you use your luster waxes or all your favorite products on this one. Now, speaking of our deco, we have got, this one is called Geo Diamonds. And this one is particularly geometric. This looks like the lobby of the Empire State Building. It's that kind of uh, vibe going on. Really, really cool. This again is a multi-level. So all of these actually are multi-level folders with the exception of the first one with the pans on it. Uh, really nice. That's by Lisa again. So um, Lisa Jones, thank you for that. That's one I'm going to be reusing rather a lot in the coming months, I would imagine. Now, we are looking now at Switchlets. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Switchlets. If you've never encountered these before, because they are rather clever, what you're getting is a 3D embossing folder. But alongside, and these are designed, these are all designed by Cat Green. This is, these are detailed butterflies. So you're getting a 3D embossing folder, and there it is. That's your lovely butterfly. And, but what it has in it are four magnets. And the magnets work in conjunction with these three very different butterfly framelits. So what we do is we place that there against the magnets. Now that holds it in place. So when you pass this through the machine, not only does it die cut that lovely outside, it also gives you that gorgeous emboss as well. So you're getting the emboss detail in the center 
and you're getting that die cut. And as I say, you have three very, very different options. Now, I suppose, I haven't tested the theory, but you can use these independently as well. So if you want a simple, clean die cut, you can use that just using it as a thin lid, but using it together with the folder is by far the best way to go. And those are detailed butterflies. And here is an example of the sizes that you're gonna get, just some of the lovely colors from our card stock there. And you can see that, that gorgeous detail in the center. So that is detailed butterflies. I'll just take this away for a second and I shall introduce you to the next set, which are detailed blooms. And here are the flowers. And you can see very, very different, but the embossed detail in the center is always the same. Uh, it's quite a unique technology. It, it really is. It, it, it's absolutely gorgeous. Lots of fun to work with. And again, because it's 3D embossed, you can use all your favorite um, luster waxes, your acrylics, your inks to bring the detail to the fore as well. Now, now that concludes embossing. Well, embossing and switchless, which is a kind of a halfway house between fillets and embossing folders, of course. And we're going to look at our rubber stamps. Now, we've got three sets of stamps here. Kind of classic um, sort of sentiments. We have this one is dictionary definitions. And we've got some lovely definitions. Joy, creativity, dream, love, laughter, beauty, happy. This is something that I design myself because um, I use these a lot on base cards. And we we're always getting comments, where did you get your stamps from, people? And well, of course, I used to just print them onto the cards, but we decided, well, you know what? We're getting such a great um, response to these. Well, let's turn it into a stamp set. And this is what we have. So that is dictionary definitions, and here they are in all their glory. So they're kind of evergreen words, so you can use them in conjunction with pretty much anything that we've seen today. Now, next up, we've got a couple of classic fonts. This is called Good Vibes number four and the sentiments are things like so very thankful sending hugs wishing you joy oh happy day uh find your wings and fly be the rainbow sending happiness sending love your way let love shine and life is beautiful so you know these kind of things what i like about these is they do not lend themselves to any particular um kind of occasion they're evergreen. You can use them in conjunction with any of your die sets. They want the sort of stamp set that if you're looking for a sentiment, you can't think what to put. This will be the answer. It's kind of a magic bullet. Um, and you know, the, the right size. So you can you you can put them on a card front and leave lots of white space around it. Maybe just a couple of little falls or a butterfly. But find your wings. Um, you know, something like that. Keep it simple. There we are. Next up, this is Good Vibes, number three. And again, lovely, lovely little sentiments here. There's lots to choose. I don't, I don't know how much. Let's count these, shall we? One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 25 stamps. Um, fabulous value. Oh, no, it says 24 on the bottom. Why didn't I just look at the bottom? But we've got sentiments like, have a wonderful day. Oh, happy day. Again, let love shine. I believe in you. Let your dreams take flight. Thankful for you. Do what makes you happy. So they're all those really good vibe kind of sentiments which have become increasingly popular as we're getting sort of crawling towards hopefully the end of this pandemic. We just like to send good vibes out to friends and family. They will work with your journaling, with your card making, with your scrapbook, any kind of paper crafting uh, application that you wish. So they're, they're kind of classic and evergreen. And that, my friends, concludes that segment. So we've looked at pretty much everything. In a second, we're going to be looking at our lovely big stars as well. So uh, do you have a particular favorite? I know you said you love you love the um, the joyriders. The Joyriders, yeah, the Joyriders is, is my overall favorite. I've been looking at, the, at these and anything that has butterflies in it, anything that has lots of different types of florals, yeah. uh, as you mentioned before, something that's got mechanical elements along with organic kind of floral elements. I just love stuff like that. 
Um, we do have a few questions here. So uh, we have a really great question from Karen Alman. Would you use a switchlet with your textured cardstock? Yes, yes, I would. Um, and I'll tell you for why, because a textured cardstock is 216 grams, so it's great for die cutting and embossing, but it's almost double sided. So you have that texture on one side, and the other side is relatively flat. So I would have the smooth side or the flat side against the embossing folder. So that's the side I would put against it. And when it comes out, because of the pressure that it's applied when it goes through the machine, it pretty much flattens out any texture of the card. Plus, obviously, spritzing with water from both sides of the card prior to running it through your machine, not only does it give you a deeper, crisper, clearer emboss, but it also helps that card to set kind of rock hard. So, yes, yeah, absolutely. I would, I would use a citrus card, so you can use playing cards, so you can use our opulence, you can use our textural, There's so many options. That you can even actually, I, I've used leather. Oh, really? Yeah, some kinds of leather, when you soak it and you run it through the 3D embossing folder, and just gently take it out and let it set, and it's like rock solid. Mm. But obviously, it works with a thin leather, like maybe a chamois leather, that kind of thing. Um, so just just play around. Play and that sort of that leads us on to another question that we had from Natalie Williams, which was about why you spritz the cardstock, which you've just oh. explained. Um, so uh, yeah, again, yeah. So we kind of loosen the fibers in the cardstock, um, and it's just a great technique. And then we do have a question from Katie Heal Williams. How did you decide which definitions to use, Pete? Which definition? Uh, I, I sort of decided, I think, sort of ever, evergreen. Way. Let's go back to the def dictionary definitions. And they kind of classic. And they go very much with the good vibes kind of thing, dream. Now, that, that can, you know, you can put it with a really depending on how you put your dice together. And so just the word dream and the definition underneath, I think it's very evocative. Same with love, love, we understand beauty, we understand that beauty could be lovely flaws, could be a butterfly, it could be anything, but anything that has a kind of a natural beauty. Life, I mean, yeah, we know about that. Happy, creativity, that's why we're here. You're creatives, we're creatives. And, and joy, so they're all really good side word, words. So. That's that's the criteria that I use for choosing those particular words. I love these as well, just because they're, I think dictionary definitions as they come, even with all the little brackets and things like that, yeah. are just really aesthetically pleasing on a card. They just add it's sophistication. And I, I think what, what we saw, is, you know, we, 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 look, we look for inspiration, right? And we started seeing them as like frames, mm -hmm. you know, in frames, the definition with a lovely photograph alongside them. So, Again, it's you know you might you might want to put these with a photograph in a frame on a wall. It's not just about card making. It's um, it's however you want to use them. And that's what when we when we're working on a die set, what the, the best kind of die set is something that you can use all year round, and that you're going to be using ten years from now. And it's never going to feel old. It's never going to feel tired. It's it's classic. It's something you're going to come back to. And when you have something like that, it means value for money. Mm -hmm. because it's something you're going to use over and over with the exception of uh you know uh, things like our christmas dyes which which come out every christmas anyway um but you know things that you can use all year round that's that's value for me there you go so that's it uh, uh, what now well i want to say that's it that's it for the uh, stamps and the embossing and the thinners but i want to talk about a big so i'm going to bring those in first um and so we're going to go Again, top down. This one. Now, remember, I said there was a big style which worked with your uh, your thinlets. So those lovely butterfly thinlets that we saw earlier by Jenna, she's designed a big style that works with that. Again, it works independently of that. And it's very simple. It, they're very simple shapes. And again, what I love about simple shapes is it's a blank canvas for me. I can stamp on there. I can ink on there. I can do so. Much. I can almost do a rainbow of, of inks and die cut that but bigs of course are very thick they're very deep and they have a steel blade now what does that mean how does that impact your crafting it means that you can cut felt you can cut textiles you can cut mat boards you can cut really heavyweight materials you can cut balsa woods. you can cut thick magnetic sheets you can cut pretty much anything you can cut with scissors also if you're batch making if you're making lots of cards say for example or you're making, say, say you're making a display for a wedding or something like that, and you want lots of butterflies, 
you could cut up to six layers of card with that die at one time. So it does really uh, give you something a little extra. So it brings you into mixed media, it brings you into your soft crafts, it could be a plique, quilting, whatever you do. That's why we love bigs here and that's why we are committed to continuing to bring out this type of technology for the soft crafters out there as well as the paper crafters. Now, next up, I love this one, uh, Jen Ogbon. This is Scandinavian bird, and it's that lovely, simple, classic shape. Uh, you're getting all these little elements. Again, they're really big shapes, so we are talking about versatility with this. And here's one that's been cut out using felt, because it's a big, because you can do that with a big. Now, you could even hear the actual the felt has been backed onto cardstock. So you can do that as well. So you can use the felt in your car making as well. I would love to use this in a kind of mixed media way, using pastes and using spray inks and so on and so forth. It has lots and lots of options there. One, once I actually did a bird like this, you remember we did a makeup on Yeah, I remember, yeah. And I made this bird and I put it on two uh, barbecue skewers and I did it as a kind of a... Uh, a sort of a mixed media piece like that. And I really like that, but I do remember that makeup. I, I'm very bitter about it, actually, because Josh won the competition. I wasn't going to mention that. <laughs> I, well, I was going to be graceful, <laughs> but in my head. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was, it yeah, it was great, that. I loved it. Really good fun. But the Emmy won it deservedly, I, I, <laughs> I should add. Um, but there we are. Now, let's take those out of the way. Now, classics, we are talking about this flourish. And this is by Olivia Rose. This flourish, uh, it's just gorgeous. The balance, I, I really appreciate great balance in an illustration. And this has got it going on in space. This, of course, will work by itself. It, it's a lovely, lovely big shape. And here we have the actual die cut. And this was die cut from our gold opulent cardstock as well. Um, now, imagine this with some of your larger florals or your 3D florals. Imagine cutting this out of textiles, out of felt, and using it as a plique. Now, we do have a, a heat fusible web, which you can put onto the back of your cardstock before die cutting, and then ironing it onto a table runner or a gun. Imagine you're a Christmas table, and you have this as a table runner going all the way down. It's a big size, so you can cut several at once as well. But this is a beautiful shape. It's a classic. It's I, I love, I can't tell you how much I adore this shape. It is simply gorgeous. And with a big floral, it would be stunning. And you know what? I just realized that there were a couple of thinlet sets just that I forgot to present because they're hidden behind your computer. But I'm going to bring them in because we are talking big floral. <laughs> now, these are thinlet. Sorry about this, folks. This is unexpected. Now, let's put those together. Imagine, imagine those two together. This one is called, I'm just going to go through these. This is gardenia. Now, they are separate petals. So you can make this as big, as bold, as wide as you want. You can bring it back in scale. You could create a rose with these, but these are designed to work with cardstock. But not only that, they are crepe paper. If you haven't seen a crepe paper range, please go back to the website, check it out. It's gorgeous. And I know our Jess has done some absolutely stunning things with these. So this one's actually sadly got a bit battered, but that's that's how it looked originally. So I brought that in because it does work particularly well with that swirl. And I'm just going to take it out before bringing in the other one that I forgot. And I do apologize to the to the designers here. This is another one by Joan Ogborn, as was the Gardenia. And this one has lots and lots of detail. There are six dies in total. It is called Orchid. And each of the dies, you can see that there is uh, some embossed detail in the leaves and the petals there. That's really classic. And again, it will work alongside all your favorite 3D floors. I know loads of you love 3D floors, so I apologize for actually skipping over those, but I, I, I didn't see them. I didn't see them, so that's my excuse, and I'm gonna stick with it. Now, let's take the last two, and this one, this one I have to say, as far as big styles go, this has been, this is my favorite for a long time. Uh, this is a big L die. It will work through all your machines. It's called bars and foliage. You can build this vase up, so you can use the smaller version or the larger version. You've got this glorious, absolutely glorious frond, 
which comes with it. Now, it is a big, so we're talking about all the materials we talked about earlier. We are talking about textiles. We're talking about manboard. I, I am dying to do this in a, in a kind of a mix, with a mixed media vibe. And this is the size of the actual die cuts themselves. So just absolutely gorgeous. I love that. I love that. Please, please tell me if you agree with me, because I, I can just see so many applications for it. Now, that's if, if you like Big L, let's talk about Big XL. Now, if you love this die, uh, if you, I mean, I grew up, just did you make these in school? These? Yeah. No, I never no, got around to it. No. Different generation. You didn't make yeah. them with the kids? The Josh used to be a teacher. I don't know if you know that, but... Uh, did you not make this kind of thing? These things? Lanterns really we mistake. never made. We attended, I taught the younger, younger children. Right. So, so, kind of uh, no six years old, no scissors. <laughs> but it's all done for you. It, you know, all, all this cutting down the center. Uh, you know, if your back's cutting, you get a fix. So, you can cut several of these at once. You can deck your garden out. Maybe, maybe, you know, you can put a base on this. Put a little tea light in it. Um, it's entirely up to you, but I can just see these in a summer garden party, in a children's party, in a baby shower. Oh, goodness me. Hopefully, we're all going to be coming back together more often for, uh, and, you know, the parties uh, and that. But with, with die cutting, the great thing is you can match the colors. You can match the colors with your theme. Um, it's entirely up to you how you want to use it. It's great with our cardstock. It's stunning with our opulence. Uh, it's just a really, really nice die. I love it. And it is, again, by Jen Osborne. So well done to you, Jen. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous set. So that brings us to the end of Sizzix, Chapter 2. Um, that's all of our dies, all of our embossing folders, and our stamps as well. So, Josh, do you have anything to add? Uh, again, not too many questions, but just really nice comments about, you know, I'm, I'll read them out. So we've got Pauline Jack. Happy April Fool's Day. Already got my favorites in my basket, ready to go on the website. I hope that's not a trick with it being April Fool's Day. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, we've got one from Gartland Karen. Um, so suggested that maybe you should do a Christmas dictionary definition do you know what well this let's... afternoon i did a christmas dictionary definition i'm not sure when it will be out whether we, we might miss the boat this year because chapter three is only in three months but next year we're going to get christmas de di <laughs> dictionary definitions i've done santa i've done you all time i did naughty and slipped in naughty okay uh, but yeah yeah so, so it's the same kind of thing so great minds think alike that's mm -hmm. what I like yeah. to think. Really. So we've got... Oh, go on. Go on. No, no, no. oh we have Anna Gray. Uh, I, I just love this one because it just said, sorry, exclamation mark. Got to go and get some of these goodies. goodies. Two exclamation marks at the end. Yeah. Uh, one from Deborah. That flourish is beautiful. Limitless textiles with the bigs. Uh, and I just really like that point because I, I love the fact that when you buy a bigs, yeah. you've just got limitless possibilities on creating and creating yeah. and creating. Yeah. And materials. Even, exactly. Drinks. Unbelievable. People used to cut those back in the day. But that's the thing. If, if you're a paper crafter, if you don't use textiles or anything like that, you know, the big size, it kind of future proofs you. So maybe in future you will be doing textiles. Who knows? But you have that option with a big star, of mm. course. Now, uh, so Natalie Williams had asked you to remind her which thinlet does the butterfly bigs work with? Which thinlet does the butterfly? So, okay, uh, talk amongst yourself while I just dig. dig. Okay, while you're digging, I'm going to read out. Uh, one from our, our very own Lisa Jones, fantastic designer, that just says. says Love Jen's vase and foliage design. And yeah. then my favorite uh, comment at the minute, just because it, comments like this just keep us going. We, we absolutely love it. So every time, this is from Seret George. And, and please, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing, um, but, but I'm doing my best. <laughs> so we've got Seret George. Every time uh, they show crafts, they motivate me to continue creating. Thanks, guys. And then we've got a load no, of emojis. No, no that, that's, we, we do, um, it's, you know, it, we can say it's our job, but it's not, it's our passion. That's, that's what we love. Mm -hmm. That's why we do what we do, you know? So 
when, when we when we sit down to create a project, for example, we, we're thinking about you guys. We're thinking about trying to show you the versatility of the die set. So, uh, you know, we we always think like that. We're not creating for ourselves. We we're creating these things for you. So, thank you for that. We appreciate that. So, going going back to so we talked about the big side. This is the set that it comes that it actually um, works with. So each of these butterflies will work over the top of their big companion. So that's that one. Okay. <laughs> I got one that says, tell Pete not to wear stripes. It makes him extra fuzzy to see. Nice shirt though. They make me what? Extra fuzzy. Do you look extra fuzzy? Yeah. I, don't know, I, don't I won't wear stripes. <laughs> Are they, they're not slimming. That's, <laughs> see, I, I, I hate standing along slim tall people like Josh with a full head of hair and a beard. <laughs> yeah, anyway, you stuck with me, I'm afraid. But yeah, thank, actually, thank you. I, I'll, I'll keep on working the stripes in the future. Good call. <laughs> Good call. Right, now, um, oh, on that note, we're going to talk about shaker paints now. I don't know if you've, I've just uh, done a couple of great crap shows for, I think, um, using the shaker paints, but we're going we're to be talking about it. It's a new concept from us. We've got a lot of dyes that work with them. So I'm going to reach down below and I'm going to bring some of them up. And I'm just going to explain exactly how they work and what they're all about so i think we'll switch to top down if, if we can and let's first of all let me show you what a shake paint is now this is an acrylic it's very very hard slightly flexible as well so if you're putting it through the post not a problem now it has acetate on one side and there's a separate piece of acetate now when you put now you could put a photograph inside here you could put a colored background. You could put any shaky bits like our lovely sequins and beads in there. And then when it's all ready, simply peel off the adhesive, place that on top, and you've got your shaker paint. Now, of course, this has a protective layer on as well. And you can stamp on this piece. You can actually rub stamp on it and use your embossing powders to seal that stamping in place. Now, on the other side, is another adhesive ring. Simply peel off the red backing and attach it to the face of your card. Right, so that is the shaker paint itself. And it does come in three different shapes. So we've got the squares, three different sizes, hearts, three different sizes, and circles, three different sizes. I'm holding these upside down again. Apologies, Brenda. Right, so there we are. So there are nine options in total. And you also, with those, let's take those away for a second. So I want to show you the shaker panes. Uh, I know shaking doesn't work on camera, but there you go. Maybe we can see that. Because I put some of our lovely sequins and beads in there. I've used rose gold, gold, and silver. Now, those are the circles. Those are hearts. And finally, the squares. Now, let's talk about the versatility of this product, because alongside the shaker panes, we have sets of frames. We have the squares, the hearts, and the circles. And each one contains separate elements. Now, you could use the, let's take the squares, for example. You could cut the frame, let's take the medium. You could cut that frame and place it over the top of your shaker paint and have it on the front of the card like that. Now, you could, you could add your own sentiment, you could add any die cuts around that as well. You could also, use the smaller one to cut an aperture. So that die there cuts an aperture and you've got your shaker pane inside the card. So you can mount it inside or you can mount it on top. Then the third option using that center one again is that you can cut a photograph, you can cut a background and you can put that inside your shaker pane as well. So whether you want it on top, whether you want it underneath, it's entirely up to you. But with these shaker panes, with the framelits, um, we have, Brandon just showed me a joke actually, he's, he's actually taken my concert, but it's okay, we're good, we're good to go. We'll address that one later, Brandon. There you go. So we, um, we've got a shake of they work independently of anything else. You can add your die cuts and you can use any of your dies to cut apertures through your card or to decorate these shake of pens. But, and crucially, we also have die sets. Now I'm going to go through these. I'm going to kind of whiz through them because these framelit and die sets work with the individual sizes of shaker panes. 
So this one works with the medium square. This one with the large heart. So you've got that lovely background as well and the frame. And of course, all the lovely little details. This one works with the large square. So you've got all your stamps there. So you've got happy in the center. Could be wishing you happy holidays, happy days, smile and be happy. Happy birthday, I'll tally up to you. We've got the camera, which I'm going to look in a bit more detail in a second. So we've got all the stamps and the die cut shapes. Let's put that to one side. Our rainbow. Now this works with a large circle. This one, again, all the detailed stamps down there. Butterfly works with a small heart. So that's really clever. The butterfly's wing is actually a heart. Uh, this one works with our medium circle, again, Stamps and dies, lovely, gorgeous foliage on that one. This one works with our small square, so you can have that frame either as a diamond or like that. And again, all the stamps that are coming in. And finally, everybody loves this one. Somebody loves you. And you've got the bunny rabbits, they're hugging there. They're, they're designed to go together. You've got the detailed stamps on the outside, lovely little floral flourishes, everything that you need to get going. So all of those work with individual sizes of shaker paint. Now let's talk about the camera because what we've got here, we, I'm going to show you a couple of samples. I've got lots, but I'm just going to show you a couple. But if you tune in, we're going to be having lives on the shaker pens. We're also going to be photographing these and featuring them on our Facebook page at some point. This one is my daughter, uh, somewhere underneath all those shaky stars. Um, and so we've got the stamp down there. We've got all these die cut elements. You know, it's a great way of keeping and preserving lovely memories then if you wanted to use a photograph inside. Now this one is, um, again, we've got a sentiment stamp on the inside of this one. We've got some shaky stuff in there. And we've got this cute little boy, which is being black and white, it would have to be me. So there we are. We've got two generations of the Hughes family in there and that is pretty much shaker paints all that it leaves me to show you uh, these are our frame of dice that's how they come you can see them on the back there and this is the camera set so this is how you will see the set you've got we've got all our framelets all our little bits all our detail there, and the stamps underneath and the last thing i want to show you is now this is from tim holtz chapter one it's called bold text so you see, you can use these shaker pens underneath pretty much anything that will cut an aperture. This one, again, it's the same die, slightly more masculine. And we've got some of Tim's lovely metal pulse going on on the inside there. So you can shake these about, they're really rigid. They're really rigid, and that's quite important because if you ever try making shaker pens yourself, you will know what a pain it is. Ooh, that was a stinker of a joke. I'm sorry about that, folks. <laughs> I've been working on that one all day. I thought, I thought that would go down better, but everybody's cringing and holding their head in their hands. Apologies for that. So that was shade of pens. Um, yeah, and let's let's take a look. I do have some more samples. If I'm echoing, it's because I'm underneath. Um, Just while you're going through the samples, sure, sure. Babe, I thought I saw a great question, and it has been answered on the comments, but just in case anyone hasn't seen it, and I apologize if you already covered this, but uh, it was, was, will these fit in the Sizzix envelopes to post them? Oh, they, they will, they will, but of course with postage these days, it's different in uh, every country and region, and I know if this slightly too thick, there's extra postage at the other end, so, you know, if you're going to post one of these, check out the post office, see, because you don't want the recipient to pay uh, mm -hmm. a, a premium yeah. for all the shaker pens, but they are designed just thin enough to allow you to use the sequins and beads, so they're not too deep. But that's something you need to check depending which region you're in. Brilliant. Yeah. Now, hey, well, there's one using the lovely rainbow as well. You can see the stamp detail, and this is using it independent of the shaker pen. So it just goes to show that these sets, even though they're designed to work with the shaker pens. They also work without them. Now, this was the medium circle one. There we are. You can see that lovely uh, stamped and inked floral there with some gorgeous opulence creating the foliage. Uh, this one again, my daughter Poppy comes in. That's with the medium square. Uh, the large heart. There we are. We've got that gorgeous background again, all decorated using the Sizzix opulent cardstock. If you haven't seen that before, check it out on the website. 
There we are. Somebody loves you. I, just, I, I adore this. I really do. This cause. But this time we've cut the aperture into the curve and the shaky stuff is inside there through that lovely window. The butterfly, didn't I tell you? This was great, didn't I tell you? So there you go, the small heart behind the wing, all the stamps, all the foliage, every detail on that car actually comes in the set. And then finally, this one. This one I, this one I actually um, remade. Uh, it was inspired by a card that Josh made. I stole his idea. I passed it on as my own. That's how I made a career in die cutting. Yeah, uh, but oh, if you're going to steal, steal from the best. That's what I say. So there you go. That's another one. And that, there's no, there's no, you know, there's no shaky stuff in that. That's just using some of the pliers from the outside, inside. So if you have, maybe you want to say baby's first lock of hair or some dry flowers from a wedding, something like that. Maybe the confetti from a wedding. What a great way to keep and preserve memories. Uh, Gorgeous, absolutely. That's a great that idea. Is shaker pens. Yep. So, so we had another question. Um, so, just to cover, this is it's from Deborah. It says the lantern. What size it? She loves it. Will it fit in the big shop? Um, and the answer is yes. No, the, the lantern. The, the lantern is the big XL. So we are talking about the big oh, shop. Oh, sorry, the big shot. Oh, I see. Sorry, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The, 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 the XL. Right. Yeah, it will. You need your big shot plus or your switch machine. So that's where you need to go with with the big set. So. And then we had another question, which I think you'd really like, which is: Is Pete being fifty-eight an April Fool's joke? No, Pete is fifty-eight. Thank you for that. That was the joke that Brandon showed me earlier. Yeah. yeah. No, Pete is. Pete <laughs> is no, I didn't actually, see that. Pete is fifty-seven. But <laughs> and then we just had another question just before you carry on. Uh, not a question, sorry. That was a, a comment from Fifi Stamper. Um, wouldn't our hubbies love cards made with the camera? Men so love interactive cards. I saw that and I thought, you know what? We do. We do. We do, don't we? Yeah, I guess it's a playing thing. Yeah. So we love to play. We do love that. We'd be sitting in a chair shaking. I like that. Yeah. So, yeah, if you, if you want to. Uh, Keep your brother, your uncle, your husband, your grandfather happy. Give them an interactive card. There you go. We learned something today, people. Now, next up, I want ready to look at muted. Let's look at our muted collection because um, I've got it here. What now? Muted. We talked about card stuff. We've got a lovely. Everybody knows our color story card stuff. Now this is a new edition. This is muted, and um, again, it's color story. So this is a chapter of that story it does it works beautifully by itself as we've seen from some of the samples which we've shown today but it also is designed to work alongside our court cards so you're probably familiar with that range of 20 colors and with this as well you are getting 80 sheets four of each color 20 different colors 216 grams i think that 80 pounds isn't it if we're talking in uh I think it's 80 pounds the weight of the card stuff. Um, pretty yeah, sure. That's um, going. Pretty sure. Um, but yeah, so you've got all these gorgeous colors. Now, these are the core colors, the large ones. Jess has put this together. And when I finish today, I've got to put these in Jess's car because she's off to create and craft on Monday for 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. shows featuring the muted collection. So if you want to really know about them, Jess will be able to tell you chapter and verse. Now, alongside the card, we also have this gorgeous range of opulence. So I'm going to tilt these around because we're getting glitter card, we're getting metallic card, and we're getting pearlized card in there. You can see how it embosses beautifully. See that gorgeous glitter card there. And these go with our core colors in the muted range. Now, of course, of course, because it's color story, we have sequins and beads. We've just talked about the lovely uh, shaker card, shaker pants. Imagine it with some of our muted as well. Now you can mix and match with our standard as well. We have muted colors of embossing powder and you can see it here as a stamp and here as a block color on these lovely panels as well. And finally, last but not least, there's also our glitter collection as well. And each of these goes with a part of that lovely muted um, sort of color swatch. So there we have it. That is muted. Uh, lots and lots of fun. If you've loved our previous cards, I'm sure, I'm sure you're going to absolutely adore 
for this muted collection. It, it's, it's stunning. Some of those greens pair. Eucalyptus. Ah, French navy. I've, I've been looking for this colour for ages. The mute, I, I absolutely love this muted collection. It just makes it so easy to make, make your card. I feel like there's a kind of sophistication, a subtle sophistication to the colours, but they still pop. I took two weeks down into that of box. Course. We've got a box there here, and there's some little um some little colour colour swatches um that Jess has put together for this show. And this is using the muted collection. Now look at those, look at those gorgeous colours. How about that? So we like to make these little colour chips so we can we can use them as a reference when we're making cards, keeping the colour palette quite limited. Um Oh, look at that. I love that. I haven't seen these before. I, I love that. Away. Yeah, I haven't seen that these. Gorgeous. I love, oh, that. love that you, Jess. This is, this is really nice. And just while you're going through these, that sure. I'm just uh, someone had asked whether this live is going to be available to watch later. And yeah, it will be. You just need to go and watch it on the replay. And then just to cover what you're talking about with Jess's show, because someone had asked, uh, do we know when chapter two will be available on Create and Craft? Uh, so we'll be on Creating Craft with Jess on Monday, Monday the, the Monday the 4th, and that's uh, 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. British Standard Time um, to showcase the muted collection and some of the new die sets. Oh, that's right. So, so now, now we are going to be looking um, probably, oh, no, we, we're going to be looking at Tim Holtz in a minute. But should we bother with Tim Holtz? Yeah, of course we're going to be doing Tim Holtz. There's so many of you wait, but and, and as a, we saw a comment earlier on saying these chances get better and better and better, and they do, they really do. But with, with Tim, we are, we're not going to go through it in any great depth because if you tune in tomorrow uh, to Tim's channel, if you go to Tim's website, that's timholtz.com, he will be going through his chapter two collection in, in the most precise detail. So we don't, we, we, we're just kind of cheesing it, but please watch that. It's, uh, if you're in the US, that's 8 o'clock, um, no, 9 a.m., I think, Pacific time. And if you're in the UK, it's 5 p.m. So I guess when you're in different regions of Europe, you can work out from uh, British Standard Time. So it's 5 o'clock here. So, you know, go do your shopping, sit down, a cup of coffee, a couple of biscuits, a couple of hours of Tim. What could be better? There you go. Now. We are going to be looking at that, but before I do, I, I, something I want to mention It's called texture roll. Uh, if you've seen our texture rolls before, you'll know all about them, but we brought out a six inch uh, cork texture roll. These, these rolls, um, if I can just open this up without, without tearing it, uh, I think that's easier said than that. But they are about, I think, they're six inches in depth and a massive 48 inches. In light, so there you go. There you go. Thank you, Jess. Mm. Now, this is cork. This is actual cork. This is not faux cork. This is the real deal. It die cuts beautifully. It's great for you know, if you've got um, Eileen Hull's journal dies, absolutely wonderful for that. And while I'm on the subject of Eileen, she did uh, an overview of her chapter two dies yesterday. So you can go to YouTube, you can find that. I guess it's going to be on our hub at some time if it's not already. It, it is on already. Yes, I'm getting I'm getting the nod from Abby. Yeah, it's going to be. It's actually on the hub. So go go and see Eileen. It's about 20 minutes. She is the most delightful company, and she explains her uh, collection in such wonderful detail, so much better than I could, I think. So so we'll leave that to Eileen. But but now let's let's have a look. Tim Holtz. Tim Holtz. Before we look at the dies. Where are you going to put these dice? Well, storage. Let's talk about Tim's new storage folders. Uh, this is the this is his gorgeous storage folder. We've got the Cesic logo, and we've also got Tim's logo alongside it. It's it's in Tim's colours as well. And let's open this up because I want to talk about the functionality of this. Now, as you know. With Tim Holtz dies, you get, and um, this is the, oh, here we go. With Tim's dies, you get the folders which come with them, these lovely envelopes which store your dies. You can also put the artwork in there as well. And of course, you've got the dies in the envelope. Now, to make that work, you need these go to, so this works with any of you, any, any of Tim's dies that have come in this format. We have these, which are what now? Memory serves, yes, binder adapter strips. 
So basically, you have these strips, you tear off uh, the adhesive and attach them to the side of your folder so it doesn't impede the envelope at all. And then you can put them in your binder. There are 10 strips in a pack. So that's really, that's really great value for money. So that's a great way to store the dice. Now, 3D embossing folders, they are slightly larger. So we have come out with some transparent envelopes for your 3D folders, should you wish to store them alongside or indeed in a separate folder to your dies. So there you go. That is the storage solution. Again, Tim's going to be talking about this tomorrow. So I won't go into too much there. Now, next up, we have Tim's, this, this lovely little storage case. Tim's signature again. Inside here, you can put all your favorite tools. So we've got the mini die brush, the die pick, we've got uh, tweezers, there's, the, there's the, little, the little sponge as well, which comes with the die brush. Um, in the top level, now if you're somebody who likes, who is castling on the move, or you don't maybe craft in the same room as you store your crafts, um, then this is absolutely great for keeping everything together. We've got all our making tools there. We've got the foam. We've got the the the, the deep foam for you to use these um, to use these lovely lovely tools for forming your flowers and everything. The die pick, the die brush, the whole nine yards, and it will take some of Tim's uh, the small and the medium scissors as well. So. That's a really well thought through product. Very sturdy as well. I, I really like that one. Um, so then you go, that's, that's storage. Now, what do we put in the storage? It's time to come to the times themselves. And as I said, I am going to be very brief. I would rather let Tim uh, work his magic. But uh, if you miss Tim's on Saturday, then Josh and I will be back on Thursday at 4.30 um, UK time to go through Tim's chapter two. So I'm just going to show you some of the dies now. Uh, the, the, we have, this one is called Silhouette Birds. We've got nine separate dies, and that is the size of them. Gorgeous, gorgeous, really glorious set, that one. Um, then we have Modern Floristry. Now, we've got lots of samples, but we're going to keep these till Thursday. Tim's got tons of samples from his making, uh, from his design team as well, so check those out. Modern Floristry, again, Wow, not just the shapes of the flowers, but these little elements which come with it as well. It's a glory, it's a really, really nice set, this one. Um, fantastic, 11 dies in that set. Only Tim could come up with something so so funky. They kind of look like almost as if they've been painted in really broad watercolor brush strokes. Now, next up, we have, now, if you love the uh, brush stroke flowers, this is number four. This is brush stroke number four. And of course, it works in scale and in style with all your other brush stroke flowers. And this is a board showing the size that we're going to get there. And this one, the artsy stems. Now, you know Tim's wildflowers. This is a really funky take on the wildflowers, on the success of those wildflowers. I know many of you out there already have the wildflowers. This is a kind of more modern spin on that. This is the artsy stems. And Tim's, Tim likes to point out that these, these stems, take the heads off, you've got these lovely stems. And you know what? The birds can actually sit on those, those birds that we saw at the beginning. Wow, wonderful set, really cool. Now, brush strokes, you love your brush stroke flowers. So let's get some brush stroke butterflies to go with it. So we've got three separate butterflies. They're different aspects as well. So um, I do love butterflies. I, I, I love the way that they can almost, they're coming off the page. They give your design a sense of animation as if they're in mid-flight. But those are the brushstroke butterflies. Gorgeous set. Now this one, this one, now I love. Now, look at Tim's live tomorrow. This is abstract faces. You will not believe some of the things that his design team have created with these. Um, it's just loads, loads of shapes, loads of different shapes in this. There are 19 dies in total. It's very versatile. Look beyond the faces. There's so much that you can do with this. And of course, if you have scribbles and splats or media marks, this is a perfect accompaniment for them as well. That's abstract faces. But please tune in tomorrow to Tim's Life or tune in to uh, watch Josh and I on Thursday, and we will show you some really, really cool things with that set. Now, we talked briefly about bold text number one. This is bold text number two. Uh, we love this set as designers because of the versatility. You can use the positive. 
you can use the negative, you can use them independently, you can use them together. You can die cut this into a card to create an aperture. You can die cut this into a card to create your own stencil. So you can go through there with all of our effects range. And this is how it comes. So you've got the seven different sentiments in there. They're really funky, really cool evergreen sentiments. And that brings me to the end of Tim's collection, except, except I've forgotten to talk about these glorious embossing folders, 3D embossing. Now, Tim's really reined it in this time, but, but th this one is called uh, Woven, and it looks like a burlap. And you know what? If you looked at this even closer, uh, you know, it, it's hard to tell that this is a 3D embossing folder. The great thing about it is, is that each strand is individual. It's not like a repeat pattern. Each one, I don't, Ryan, who put this together, Kudos to you, my friend, because it is stunning. It's incredible, the level of detail. Each stitch has detail within the stitch. It's made the most fantastic backgrounds. It really will. Now, with Tim's last collection, the chapter one, he talked about the incredible levels of detail and depth. But with this one, he took it the other way. He wanted very minimal depth. He wanted to go for the texture of cracked leather, and that's what this folder is called um it's very very subtle but a stunning stunning finish this is the crack ladder shown with uh some of our lovely luster waxes great great texture but look at this one this is something that i did and i embossed it into the back card and i just used a brayer with some matte quirks over the top to to get that going on it, it's a gorgeous background very very subtle Absolutely gorgeous and a great addition to Tim's collection because Tim, more than anybody, I think he likes to have continuity. That's why he likes to have a series. That's why he's not just thinking about the, the last collection. He's thinking about collections three, four years back. He's thinking about collections three, four years in the future. Um, and we are so happy and privileged to have him uh, working for us because it makes our job so much easier. So, Joshua. So, uh, I mean, the, not so many specific questions here, just loads of um, joy and praise over the fantastic dyes, uh, over how uh, great the binder is going to be for traveling. Uh, one question from Birgit Norton was, do you miss the metallic cardstock? So just going back to earlier in the video, uh, miss the metallic cardstock with water when embossing as well. Yeah, I always miss the back. Um, yeah. yeah the, 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 thing about, the thing about car soap is uh, when, when you're embossing with it, the, the metallic covering will stretch. That, that's the nature of that. But obviously, it's on, on a white core base. So to get it to stretch at the same kind of rate, because they're, they're different, uh, you know, they have different properties. So if you spritz that, let the water sink in. You will find that it really helps with the depth and detail that you get in your emboss. Well, mentioning the going back to the embossing, uh, the texture roll you were showing earlier, yeah. just how amazing is texture roll for embossing oh, as well? And we've got yeah, the uh, silver, rose gold, and metallic as well in that as well. Yeah, and, and we've got the pigments as well. So we, mm -hmm. we've got some sort of like a craft card color with the yeah. gray, we've got the white. Uh, Really, really cool product. Um, but yeah, that, 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 that's pretty much it. I think I think we've covered everything. A lot of the projects that you can see behind were made using the chapter two dies and the muted collection. Thanks to Jess for lending those to me before she goes off to do her shows. Incidentally, Tim Holtz, chance two. If you tune in to create the craft on the 10th and 11th of um, August, April, 10th and 11th of April, I shall be there and we will be not only looking at many of these chapter two dies, but also the black switch machine, Tim's switch machine. So I'll be there on the 10th and 11th times. I'm not entirely sure at the moment, but um, but yeah, check. So check on Great Craft website to see when we're on if you're interested in that. So some dates for your diary. Tim tomorrow doing his live. Josh and I back on the 7th uh, doing a live around Tim's chapter two with all the wonderful projects to support that as well. Then the uh, 10th and 11th, I'm, uh, I'm on Creating Craft myself with Tim's Chapter 2. And don't forget to go back and watch Eileen on the Sizzix Hub. 
thank you so much for joining us today. And thanks, thanks for all the comments. It's, it's lovely to hear you comment. And the fact that there weren't many questions means that we're doing our job. Yeah, right? yeah, that's exactly right. Every time a question came up, I think you'd already covered it. Yeah, you say, you say, yeah, this man and boy, man and boy. But thank you. It's really, it's really lovely. We've got to try and keep this format because we do love to hear from you. And uh, you know, I know sometimes you do have questions, and and sometimes it's better to answer them there and then. Well, we I'm, I'm looking at the screen. I can't see. Still got my glasses on. But yeah, it's better to answer them there and then while we're live. And uh, we 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 love we love this. Well, it's been fun, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been really it's been great. Fun. Yeah, going yeah. forward, I'd love to see. Do yeah. this sort of thing again. I didn't really realize how tall you were. Until yeah, until we can see ourselves on yeah. the camera just there. Yeah, yeah, I didn't either. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much. Uh, I've been paid. Um, this has been Josh. We'll see you again on Thursday for Tim Holtz Chapter 2. Um,